Okay, welcome back. We continue with our education track. And next we have uh, a panel discussion between three incredible people. Uh, so Wolfgang, Stefan, and Danko uh, will discuss how to learn data science from, from books. Uh, hello, is everyone of you here? Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. So yeah, the floor is yours. Mm. Hello everyone. Hello. So, so my name is my name is Wolfgang Weidinger, and thanks for thanks for the introduction. Basically, I will mo moderate this um, this panel, and it will be more or less how, how we want to uh, discuss how we want to educate people about data science in the eye by putting it all in one book which sounds a bit crazy to be honest but again we did it i mean physically so um i have one one copy of it with me so that is live proof that that we that we did it so if somebody doesn't believe us yeah you can buy it ha uh -huh. yeah thanks thank god mario mario has has forgotten his his copy in the basement <laughs> yeah yeah okay we, we believe you um and basically and uh, as this is the the educational track we want to uh, discuss a bit why why to write a book about it so um i want to start maybe with a short intro of of everyone so we don't want to bore you 30 to 30 to 60 seconds max and i i just uh, look at the top left corner of of my screen and i see stefan there so can you give a, a short introduction to you yeah so i'm a data professional working from armenia so my background is quite diverse i've been mostly in engineering related projects this is also i covered the chapters on data engineering uh, largely in the <clears throat> with other two colleagues in the book but also have some impact on, on business topics and let's see how you can apply data in industries okay thank you next one would be would be danko so hi uh, everyone um i'm head of data science and ai in one company i uh, i did a lot of uh, consulting in the past on, on uh, ai data science before that i did neuroscience so brain research and used machine learning for brain research. And, and by the way, my great passion is bringing AI to the level of human intelligence. Awesome. So so uh, just a small tip, please, please put your microphone uh, in front of your mouse, maybe. I, I don't think it will make any difference. It won't make any difference. So your microphone is broken now, OK. No, I have another microphone right in front of me. Ah, OK, because it was. It was okay. Perfect. Okay, Mario. Yeah, so um, hi, and also from my side. So um, as mentioned, my name is Mario and um, I am I used to be like uh, in charge of data strategy at uh, two international corporations. So over the last couple of years, and basically my focus was more on uh, architecture, governance and bringing the bits and pieces, all of them together in uh, terms of data. Thanks a lot. So last but not least, my name is Wolfgang Weidinger. At the moment here in, in this round, I'm, act, uh, I'm here participating as the president of the Vienna Data Science Group, which is a, a community and an association of um, quite large um, uh, areas now and quite large numbers now. Um, it's ba uh, Let's say it was born in Vienna, but it's quite international so um my professional background is what what is called now data science i'm doing now for yeah, nearly 20 years and in different roles different um industries i, I build teams i led teams and do we are doing that uh, but my my passion is actually educating people about the possibility uh, the possibilities um, 
about data science uh, and AI. And that was one of my main motivations of writing this book with such an amazing community of people. So, and this is also my first question to, to all of you. What was your main motivation to, to write this book? So maybe now, now start with, with Danko. Well, um, I see before writing the book, I was invited to many conferences because I was successful. People heard about me and invited me to talk about stuff. So I had to make decisions what I will talk about. And over years, topics changed. And I realized over time that I have a kind of collected uh, um, a, a number of ideas and a number of insights that I kept sharing with people. And I thought it would be really great to put this all together in one in one chapter. Mm -hmm. And when when uh, um, you welcome came with the, with the idea with the proposal, I was I was already prepared to to mm -hmm. to actually do that. Everything was already ready in my head. What needs to be okay? Done. You just you just wrote it. Awesome. So Stefan, what was your your main main motivation? I think it was quite similar. So I wanted to consolidate my knowledge. So I'm working with diverse things like, and when you are in project, then you jump around, and you don't get often the chance to yeah, get a thorough investigation on the topics that uh, on, a, on, a, on a more academic level or a more detailed level. So mm. for me, it, it helped me a lot to um, create a bracket around what I'm actually doing. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Understood, Mario. Um, yeah, I think um, because I wanted to make this fun project with Stefan and you, Wolfgang and Danko. <laughs> now, of course, this was not my main motivation, uh, but I think uh, we started. Again, I mean, why, why not? It could be it could be a side motivation. Come on, we we also want to have fun in <laughs> what we are doing, isn't it? No, I think um, honestly that a um, couple of uh, things are which uh, are really relevant to this topic is uh, I think what Stefan also mentioned is uh, mainly consolidating the know-how. That's um, a key motivation, writing it down and um, formalizing it a bit. And um, this was one of the key motivations for me. And um, I think we learned a lot during writing it, what we can still do better in uh, every day's life. Uh, so this was um, also very exciting for me because when I wrote it, I said like, okay, well, this, I, I didn't thought about that before. Um, so I need to, to implement this at some point in the, co in the company I was working for. So mm -hmm. um, it's not just mm -hmm. like consolidating the know-how, which we already have, uh, but also um, like bringing new know-how and thinking a bit okay. out of the box. So this was quite exciting for me. Okay. Okay. Awesome. To, to, round, to round it up, I mean, I, I already said it, it's my passion, but also um, for me, it was just natural because the Vienna Data Science Group is all about educating people about that. So writing a book uh, and trying to encompass it all is just the natural next step. Yeah, I, that was just, it felt like, yeah, let's do it. And yeah, wow, <laughs> I learned a lot about what it means to, to bring that then really down to one coherent piece of work. I mean, we had, I mean, maybe for our spectators here, um, it's not only the, these four uh, authors, we had 13 authors. So we are just, a, we are just representing the, them and um, yeah, uh, organizing that and, and coordinating that was quite an effort. Let's, let's put it like that. So if somebody has questions about what this engulfs, you're very welcome. I think you can do that uh, afterwards. But now digging deeper a bit about motivation and, and what, it, what it's all about and what you can read there. Um, I think maybe our listeners uh, have this, the, the question, 
why sh why should I read the, uh, this book? I mean, there are hundreds of books, or I'm not talking, maybe thousands of books about data science and AI in the market. So, so what is the main main motivation of of doing that? So, Stefan Danko Danko asks. So maybe Mario first. No. Hmm. Good question, and uh, probably uh, quite. Uh difficult answer i think education is always um, key not just um, for us as the data science group which we are doing and educating the community uh, i think it's also um, a topic which is heavily underestimated or underutilized in large organizations because you simply do not get the the, the larger number of data scientists, data engineers, data architects, or however you call them uh, into your company by like, okay, I'm so cool, I just hire them. Um, so you need to educate the people you already have on board because mm -hmm. otherwise you will not succeed. So education, I do believe, um, is um, some would probably disagree much more important than, uh, than the data science topic per se, because uh, if you don't educate the people, uh, nobody can do data science. So you're just talking about things which you could do if you would have the people that could do it, and this is, uh, this is the main yeah. issue. We know we know this feeling very well. Stefan, would you would you like to add something there? I think you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I see is, I mean, because the question was also like, why this book and not something else? And I think a uh, good extract is, is what is the people are sitting here. I mean, it is a quite diverse group. Yeah? So so my focus is, is strongly data engineering and DevOps. I have a computer science background and I worked uh, with quite complex situation. But on the other hand, Danko is a, a brilliant academic. So he's a, he's a scientist. He brings more the scientific view. And yeah, Mario is, is, a, is a perfect um, data strategist and he has quite a lot of CDO level experience. And of course, then, yeah, Wolf, you are the jack of all trade who rounds it up. Yeah? So I think this diversity of the authors, and I'm not, I'm not and there are also the other authors. They are they are all in 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 a way bringing their special knowledge, and it's and this book is written from different voices and different backgrounds. So if you don't can't align with with one author, there might be another author that fully f f addresses what you're looking for, and this diversity makes this book, in my personal view, special. Mm -hmm. I want to add something there, Danko. Actually, what I could add is the experiences or, or the feedback I got from other readers. So what would very often happen, I would talk to someone about the topics that I am passionate about, and then I would tell them, like, you can read more about it in this book. So mm -hmm. I would kind of make a, 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 a um, promotion for the book from my own perspective from my money my mm -hmm. own interest but what would people people would buy the book then read it and then they would come back to me not only oh yeah now i read your your, your chapter but they would always come wow your the book has also this chapter the book had also this chapter well i always mm -hmm. wanted to read about that yeah. i must read this so and everybody you know without me telling them first everybody was in some way you know, delighted that the book covers so many different topics and everyone, no matter how much knowledge they have, they're missing knowledge in some topics. And and they have this feeling like I, I have to get better there, but they don't mm -hmm. find time, they don't find the proper resource. And now when you have everything listed, like we try to cover the whole data science, although that's impossible, but we tried. They always find something that they really wanted to know and they felt they needed to, to learn about and never got around and are perfectly happy to have to have a book that covers all that that they can read. Yeah. And I know they read it. They basically they later come to come to me and, and tell me mm -hmm. that they, what they read, what they learned yeah. from, and, and 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 so on. So mm -hmm. that's you know, everybody needs all of us. No, none of us knows everything. Hey, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right to to be honest when uh, you talked about crazy and 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 you're right i mean when when we had this idea of putting it all in one book it felt like okay a lot of people said come on guys please focus here a bit and 
for me it was just this culmination of, of so much so so many talks i had and so many chats i had in in the community of with so many different people so um it felt crazy and i think we are on a very good way yeah for all the for all the people out there we are now in our second edition and we are making vast progress to a tower to our third um but the thing is I really have to say without this community, no way. I mean, it's, it started a bit like Stefan asking me, can we do something like that? And I think we have to include more people there. And I said, yeah, I'm with you. We have to include more people than two or three or four. So um, I think it was worth it. And it's maybe a bit crazy, but I think this is the, these are the most important interesting projects which feel a bit crazy at the beginning because then this has some potential in my opinion um, and um, having it as a, as a result from from the community is, is awesome from from my opinion but I think that this is enough of, of promotion <laughs> let's delve a bit into what it's uh, what it's all about and I wanna I wanna delve a bit into the the topics you you actually are, are covering there to, to give our listeners a bit of uh, examples. Okay, what, what can I read there? And I maybe maybe starting with you, Danko, I mean, your speciality you already talked about. Um, but I think one of the topics you are really talking about there is what are the main problems when, when building an, an artificial intelligence uh, solution? And I think this is something a lot of our listeners are very used to uh, asking this question. So, um, see, building an artificially intelligent machine, the, the, the main problem is that this machine has to face real life. Right? Not always, but in most cases, there are some, some artificial intelligence solutions that just play chess. That's not real life. But uh in most cases you have to you have to face real life and the real life is complex it's not something that can be easily dealt with so it's it's a big challenge right? and on, on one side on the other side we do not still do not have enough of good enough technology to have some sort of a general solution of, for artificial intelligence that you could just easily pick up, take off the shelf, give it a little bit of data, give it a little bit of thought, put this together, run it and goes. Unfortunately not. Unfortunately, every AI solution is a new problem from beginning, pretty much. Mm -hmm. You have to take various tools, but you have to do lots of things. You have to do lots of work. You have to do analytics. You have to make mistakes, trials and errors. Sometimes you fail. Actually, it's very often it happens that artificial intelligence projects fail because it's, yeah. it's not impossible to predict whether it will be successful or not. It's very hard. There's no way to calculate your, your yeah. success. You have to try things. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then one important problem that comes with all this together is that our technology best technology we have, machine learning, scales poorly. And that's something that people are not aware about. And actually, the, the whole community wasn't aware about only until recently. Only since recently, we have studies that have, sh have shown us that scaling intelligence with machine learning technology is, is horrible. It's really, really hard. What does that mean? Scaling intelligence means, say, increasing the intelligence, doubling the intelligence. So, so there is a question. If I want to double the intelligence of my deep learning network, mm -hmm. how many more resources do I need every time I double the intelligence? Right? Ideally, you know, we wouldn't need any more resources. It would just come with the same resources. Doesn't, yeah. This doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. A second best case would be that it's linear. When I, you know double the, the intelligence, I need twice as many resources. 
Now, the studies have given us the answer. They could look back in all the different models that we have built, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, and see what these curves look like, amount of intelligence on X axis, X resources on the Y axis. And mm -hmm. the curves are really, really sad, <laughs> really disappointing, because this is a power. Oh. It explodes, poor. And basically, one study has, has in, in computer vision has estimated that, uh, that the exponent of this power law is nine. <laughs> you know, oh. uh, nine, it means that that to double the intelligence of some yeah. visual system, like you double intelligence means uh, you, the system recognizes twice as many objects with the same accuracy without any mm -hmm. sacrifice in accuracy. Mm -hmm. You need two to the power of nine resources more, which is 500 times more resources. Then, then if you want to double once again, then you need another 500 times from the last one, right? Yeah. So it's it's 500 times per, multiplied by 500 times, which is what 25,000 times or something, just to increase the, the intelligence four times. And that's the reason why we have today this huge, huge, huge model. This is the reason why GPT-3 is as enormously big. It has to mm -hmm. be because mm -hmm. that's how machine learning works. It's really not friendly to resources. And, and this is the uh, resources <laughs> mean the size of the, of the model, the amount of data, the amount of computation, and so on. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, that's crazy. It's crazy, yeah, but that's that's the, the, the reality of, of, of all the numbers, of everything in practice, mm -hmm. what we see. So mm -hmm. you have to be aware of it, and you have to you have to uh, take it in account whenever you develop AI. You can assess it today. There are tools to assess it and mm -hmm. kind of predict what kind of resources you may have. But that's a big reason why, why for example, uh, uh, self-driving cars are not succeeding right? because the early successes were really great and the feeling was back then that you could just you know work a little harder improve a little bit add more data and then it will just be good yeah but now <laughs> the real life is really complex and if and if the the, the small model covers a small fraction of it and mm -hmm. if you want to increase the fraction 100 times more which would be maybe needed mm -hmm. you need 100 to the power of nine more resources, mm -hmm. which is 100 multiplied by itself nine times, which is 18 zeros. And there's no so much resources on the planet. And is probably not in the galaxy, in our galaxy. So we'll never have <laughs> a self-driving car with this technology that we have today. Different well, technology, different story, but not with the deep learning, not with machine learning. Okay, what now, now we're talking about, about analytics and, and deep learning modeling. And now maybe coming to to the other other side of, of AI data science. Let's say data, let's say data engineering is here and maybe modeling is here. I mean, what we have heard now a lot about the challenge there is scaling it up. Crazy. What do you think, Stefan, is, is, is one of the biggest challenges in, in, in data engineering? I mean, is it, is it comparable? Is it, is it scaling that bad? Yeah, well, I mean, Danko mentioned it, what the problem is in a way. Because, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the fascinating thing as a data engineer is that when you work with tons of data, you have to really bring a lot of engineering skills. So, so you have to understand how computer mm -hmm. systems are working. Yeah how to scale, how to distribute the data without um, getting any concurrency issues. And the biggest challenge that I face in, in, in data engineering is simply that many of these systems are really, really running on a legacy uh, software. So the, yeah. many people don't know this, but, but when you work then with huge amount of data and you start disassembling some code and then you realize that uh, they were, they're using some old Java versions and and, and very often it depends also on the Linux uh, drivers that you're using. And then you yeah. realize what is low stump. So, so one of the, the most fascinating things as, a, as a, a data engineer is simply to think always how you can yeah, uh, lim uh, so go to the, the limits of, of the, the systems that you have. How can you squeeze more out of the, the, the platforms that, that you use? How can you distribute the data better? How, 
and this is what I, I find hugely fascinating. But what uh, what makes it also so difficult because to accomplish excellency in this, you need to understand hardware in all the details. You need to understand how distrib distributed computing works, how yeah. you scale. You have to also good intuition what this error message might tell you, and and what and what is the root cause of the error that you're just now facing. But if you're in in it, it's it's fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, oh, now now we oh, we are talking about about the technical side, and we are already uh, hearing a lot about the, the challenges there. But again, to make this all happen, normally at, at least in the companies I have been, there has to be some hopefully goal in, in doing what you're doing, and hopefully a strategy behind. Would you agree with me, Mario? Should, should there be a strategy behind and is that happening at the moment or maybe not so much? Um, yeah, I, I would uh, basically absolutely agree that there needs to be a strategy behind. Um, the thing is what I could see in um, in large corporations is they are working with the, the statement of when in anger, fear or doubt running circle screen on shout. That's basically what we are doing in large corporations when we talk about data strategy. So I saw a couple of interesting approaches to that. So the data strategy was, okay, let's hire some data scientists, some data engineers, and we can tick it off. So um, what can this, possibly uh, go wrong? Come on. Yeah, what can possibly go wrong? And this is uh, this was creating a lot of frustration with a lot of people um, because large corporations that are far away from being digital, um, they just want to fulfill their yearly goals. And the yearly goals was establish a data unit. Okay, so... If this is the goal of the company to establish a data unit, that is um, definitely not a strategy. I would say that's an anti-strategy because it's uh, just creating uh, problems. So I do believe there must be a clear strategy in order not to frustrate people. And probably the strategy is um, taking a couple of steps back. Why focus on the use cases? I had a discussion with uh, a board member who said, like, we have to do all the fancy use cases because others are doing it as well. I asked him, yeah, okay, but would you buy a Ferrari and go on a mountain track with that? Um, good luck with it. So um, the strategy must be really thought of. What do you want to achieve in a couple of years from now? And that's probably, it's not a, not like um, you can turn it on like this. Um, doesn't work. Maybe the companies uh, most of us used to work on, Danko, where you're working, this is uh, pretty mature already. But uh, the majority, 90% of the companies, they are not. And they are missing out on the cultural aspects of things. So um, I, 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 I realized that the majority of uh, data science is it's basically or data engineering. 90% of that is changing the culture. Mm, agreed. Agreed. And wh what do you think? I mean, this is a pretty broad question. I mean, creating the, this 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 culture. I mean, what are the biggest challenges there? I mean, it sounds easy. Create a culture. Come on. How much time do we have? <laughs> no. Okay, the, I, I do believe that there are a couple of things. So first of all, um, imagine a traditional company that has an uh, IT department attached. Is it a digital company because they have an IT department attached? No. Um, data science, data engineering, and all the things, they need to happen everywhere in every function, in every corporate function. This means that you have to educate the people. And um, another term which I like in the American uh, uh, sayings is evangelize. So you need to evangelize data science. You need to evangelize data engineering. You need to evangelize what's data quality. Um, data governance is heavily neglected in most of the companies. So um, we do not focus on data governance because everybody wants to do the fancy data science. Um, or people that might want to do data engineering because this is still exciting working with people like Stefan. But then when you think about data governance, who is ever claiming at a conference I'm a data governance engineer? <laughs> sounds boring. Yeah, it sounds like the people that nobody would chat up with or nobody wants to go for a drink with. These but we are just having... busy and they don't have time to go to conferences. Yeah, <laughs> because they have so much work eventually. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I do believe there is so much uh, that needs to change in culture that needs to change in terms of like who is responsible for data. And I introduced it in my previous company that um, every C minus one is in charge of the data they produce. This is giving impact. Yeah, agreed. Well, I mean, 
we are we all believe in that that we can automate and and really let's say uh, find the perfect solution for everything yeah maybe not the perfect solution but it, it actually sounds like um well we want to achieve artificial intelligence and the answer is a bit boring like let, do better data governance or of as as one of the steps so hmm well this is not a very it, for for the human resources department it, that may be not so and maybe not the best the uh, the best thing uh, thing to do but stefan in your uh, in your uh, experience i mean this this is all about all about data engineering what i hear now so do the basics right isn't it yeah absolutely and <clears throat> And here, the, the, the thing is, of course, uh, similar like Mario said, that you have to learn to walk before you, you can run. Um, what I experience is often it's a knowledge topic. So, of course, there's, there, there's some pattern, uh, anti-patterns, and we describe it also in the book. Yeah? So some people, of course, are completely focused on technology. They hear technology is great, and they, they want to use it, and they use the technology just because it's cool, and it doesn't solve the, the use case. So. So there is definitely a lot of uh, things there, and um, and also it, it brings us also to, to a completely new topic. And this is there is quite a lot of things in a in a social system of a, of, of a company often going wrong. So uh, and very often I say you need someone who teach them how to communicate to, to, to each other because because mm -hmm. everyone believes that that if they go into tech that the technical silos and everything will be great and best only communicating via chat systems and then everyone builds his own and until you realize it doesn't all doesn't work together so what it always boils down to is um you have to first of all accept where you are at the moment and what's the next thing that you can do better and and then of course you have to also know where you want to go to and and there's one saying that sums it up so so people when when people come to to to, to companies often their first statement they say well you're not google <laughs> this means uh <laughs> don't try to do to mimic what google does but but get get simply your business one step further mm -hmm. well yeah we are obviously not a lot of companies are, are google or netflix i mean this is normally the, se the second company but uh, but again, I mean, in in a lot of the discussions I reading also in popular books or whatever, um, sometimes you still read that that artificial general intelligence is coming now, and we are talking about data governance, data engineering, and come on, I mean, what what do we have to do that that this actually materializes? I mean, it's, it. It isn't just about the data, isn't it? Or or is it, Anka? I mean, that's your speciality. Huh. Uh, artificial general intelligence is a, is a popular topic, um, uh, as if as if a goal that we are trying to achieve. Right? We don't. Everybody agrees we don't have today anything like artificial general intelligence or almost everyone agrees there's a few people who claim they have solved it already but the community doesn't agree that they have solved it now uh what is the idea behind it like i said i said at the beginning that every problem is a new problem in in our, in ai so when you start when you want to make a new solution you have to start from kind of from scratch you have to do it in you. You cannot take some previous solution and, and just apply it. Now, if we had something like general intelligence, and we if we had a machine that's general intelligent, then this machine by definition would just be smart about doing anything and everything. We would just use one the same, one the same machine. So like think of a computer. If you have a digital computer a digital computer is a general machine you can do like almost anything with a computer including streaming video and and writing and calculating doing data science and, and thousand other things but a computer is just a tool for a human mind and it's actually human mind that brings this generality now if we had a one idea is that if we had a 
if we had a, a machine that's general, then the machine would be like human mind. And the theory is, or, or assumption is that the human mind is general as well. But there's a big problem. There, there, there are some theorems in machine learning theory uh -huh. that tell us that that's impossible. Right, there's something okay. like that is impossible, right? And notably, uh, there is uh, a theorem called the no free lunch theorem, mm. which is basically saying that if you develop a machine learning system good for one task, it will necessarily be bad for some other tasks. The more skills you give to machines for a certain task, like learn quickly this problem, figure mm. out chess or figure out driving, it will necessarily lose capabilities to learn the other things. So if it goes better in chess, it will be worse in cars. If it gets better in cars, it will go worse in language and so on. And the theorem says that's a general property. You cannot mathematically create a learning system that, that would be general at all. And yet people, people stream towards building a general intelligence, ignoring the theorem, I suppose or finding some excuses around it, I don't know. And some even claiming that they have solved it, right? But you know, this doesn't seem to hold water so far. So in my opinion, we are never going to have general intelligence. We may have something similar, something much better. Yes, sure, we are not done. We can have much, much better things and we can have something more similar to human mind, but human mind is also not general. Right? Human mind is also oh. has very limited set of skills that we can do and lots of things that we are just completely confused about. Yeah. Right? If if you don't believe me, just try to beat a handheld calculator in multiplying numbers and let's see who's going to win. <laughs> or, or I don't know. Try what, to memorize yeah. 100 numbers if you can, just random numbers. You can't. And there's so many things we cannot do, right? We're yeah. good in a, one subset of things and that's what we're doing good. And lots of other things we are not good at all. Mm. So you will have to have specialized machines and some will be more similar to human mind. Hopefully once we, one day when we understand how the brain works, which we still ah. do not, <laughs> which wow. we still do not. It's, so there's lots to do, but we'll never I, have, I, we, not, Yeah, exactly. When I, when I listen to you, it's like, yeah, we are far way out. So like we are maybe at the beginning of, or maybe at the end of the beginning or something like that. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's nice. That's the ideal, that, uh, ideal situation for, for myself. That's ideal. So I have things to do. It, it's, <laughs> not, it's not boring. If everything was solved, I, I don't know what I would do. And now it's interesting. Completely, completely, completely agreed. Completely agreed. I mean, that, that's why I'm, I'm still in, the, in this field. And in, in, after nearly 20 years, I'm still like, <laughs> There are decades of, of doing stuff before me because when when our, our, listener, our listeners um, actually hear us, I think uh, what they might have heard is like, okay, this artificial intelligence thing and the autonomous driving, that, that's way out. And in data engineering, still a lot to do. And data strategy, yeah, okay, let's do the basics right. So, hmm. Maybe, maybe uh, I think what I what I want to correct here maybe a bit is I'm doing that long enough now that generally speaking I see the huge progress being made. There's really huge progress. I mean, things which when I studied were like not really possible just in detecting stuff in in pictures to be what is now what what was then called computer vision is now called computer vision and was not really working then to be honest is now working which sounds uh, or which feels so normal now because it's in your iphone smartphone or whatever but it's not that far away that it just didn't work so and i could now go on for you, you said GPT-3, I mean, yes, that's progress, but still 
you can argue if that's general intelligence. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's don't argue that. But yeah, I know. <laughs> but but again, um, we have now five five min minutes left, and we we talked a bit about uh, educating people. So I, I want to maybe for the last four four minutes ask you the the question. Um, uh, now, again in the in our round, have we done something for education by writing this book? Do we think that hopefully somebody got educated by it? So what do you think? Maybe now, Danko, Danko for first again. Well, I know for sure that people got educated. They told me. Hey. <laughs> super. I mean, I, I got in a couple of emails from some students from university saying, mm -hmm. "Oh, I read this book and I read this and that, and asking me maybe some questions. How okay, they continue with some project or with a career or something like that. So definitely, people get educated. Yeah. Okay. So I think we have done a good thing for 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 people, for the community, for <laughs> for the world in general. <laughs> well. Um, then let's let's really. Uh, I mean, we can nearly stop here because it doesn't get better. Or Stefan, can you top that? <laughs> I think I think we have to uh, we have to think also on the future. So uh, we have for the next upcoming edition also a new author on our team. So she comes mm -hmm. from Latin Ameri Ameri America, and she brings all, all, uh, a lot of new input and. And one of the things is also when I mean I have myself been in Argentina and and English is not so many people speak English yes but but let's say some people might still want to speak Spanish and one of the goals for the next edition is also to reach uh, the all countries of the world with uh, so um, because I believe this is where we have to head towards to so so people in Buenos Aires or anywhere in the world. They may want to, to read about data science in their own language. And I mm -hmm. think we have still a, a mission to go. And I believe that the existing uh, edition is a good foundation. And of course, we will try to make the next edition even better. And yeah, let's hope we, we reach more people. There's still room to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Mario, what do you think? Uh, I cannot top uh, Danko's and Stefan's comments, I think. Uh, you don't have to. But... I have to. Oh, well, that's a terrible. You don't. You but, don't. But uh, but basically, I would definitely say, yeah, people got um, educated um, because I uh, people were coming up and asking me things, and they say like, oh, I wrote it and I read it in this book, uh, this and this topic, and I was like, yeah, well, that's cool. So um, definitely, people read about it, people thought about it, and. Um, people asked us questions about it. So like Danko, I also got some questions on, so how did you mean that? How did you mean this? And mm. uh, how can this probably be properly implemented? So this is definitely creating um, some, some thoughts and uh, also giving us back education because we get the feedback um, on how we can actually improve it in the in future versions. And this is, uh, I would say the book is a uh, living, thing which is continuously evolving so uh, we don't yeah. know where it will be in two years from now to be honest. Yeah. you're right you're right yeah i would say around uh, rounding it up um two very concrete things came to my head one was that some um professor i think from mexico asking me how he can contribute and and um how his students can 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 contribute for for this and it was like okay that's that's cool like yeah so if if he's listening i will come back to you <laughs> and second um second our our publisher talking to us and and saying to us well there is a lot of interest from from lecturers from the university because it seems this is something which really covers everything and you want to have an overview and so many curriculums are, are now um, actually um, created and they want to have this overview. So, okay, believe them. So definitely making waves, which is good, but still way to go. And I think you, you said something very, very good, Mario. It's, it's work in progress. 
I think a lot of people still think of books like, yeah, this is this book now. And I, we are not seeing it that way. It's really like a work in progress. And I think we are getting better from iteration to iteration. But agile. So yeah, um, we have to close now. Time, time is up. And maybe um, if you have asked you yourself, what, what is this all about? It was about this book. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you are, if you are yeah. interested and wanna wanna have a look, please give us a review on on Amazon. Very very happy if you do that. We want to learn. We want to iterate. What you want to see there? Um, we want also to to broaden our our reach and and also the, the topics we are covering. So. Authors are, are welcome. Thanks a lot to the world. Thank you. Super Bye. cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all for, for a great discussion and for being with here today.